Well, less than an hour ago, I was standing in that pulpit and preaching the Word of God in a sweet revival service. Preachers let me stay over. Uh, the church folks have made their way home. And uh, we're going to have class in this, to me, lovely sanctuary auditorium. We are in 1 Peter chapter 3, tonight, verses 10 and 11. 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11. Let me read you the verses. You listen. Better yet, and I hope you do have a copy of the Word of God by your side, uh, you follow along as I read these two verses. 1 Peter 3.10 For he that would love life, let me get that clause again, for he that will love life and see good days, Peter's got a recipe for loving life and enjoying your days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. And then verse 11 continues the thought, let him eschew evil. We'll study that verb. Let him eschew evil and do good. Live a Christian life of doing good, good works. Let him seek peace, not just seek it, and ensue it. E-N-S-U-E, an old King James verb, and ensue it. Those are very practical lessons for us to apply in our everyday Christian lives. Now, as we wade into these two verses, something that I would like to mention. We're going to look at last lesson. Be sure and view that if you possibly can. Combine it with this lesson. And Peter has taught us, Peter has now taught us to love one another. That's verse 8, 1 Peter 3, 8. He has taught us to love one another. Then he taught us to love our enemies. That's verse 9. And here in our text, he is now teaching us to love life. Verse number 10. I should have made a little chart. I didn't. Uh, let me give it to you again for you note takers. Peter has taught us to love one another. Verse 8. To love our enemies. Verse 9. And to love life. Verse number 10. If that's not down to earth, practical Christian living, then I don't know what it is. Someone labeled, uh, labeled this little paragraph we're in, this little two verse section, blessings with conditions. God will bless us, but there's some things we must do to enjoy those blessings. Let's look at verse 10. Let's immediately get started. For he that will love life. For he that will love life. Now, the, the verb to will, for he that will love life, it is significant. In the Greek text, it is expressed by the verb thelo, T-H-E-L-O, thelo. What does it mean? To make a decision in favor of. Thelo. It, it is an exercise of your volition. To decide to do something. Thirteen times in our King James New Testament, it is to desire. To desire. So, he that will love life. Peter is saying this. As a Christian... I can love my life, I can enjoy my life, I can consider my life a blessing, but I'll have to will it 
So I'll have to decide. It's going to, life to a certain extent is what you make of it. Joseph of old, Joseph who was in prison, though innocent, Joseph who was hated of his brothers and sold into slavery, he could have looked at his life as one of sorrow, neglect, and evil. But you know what he decided? Tello, do you know what he chose to do? He chose to look at his life of one of blessings and goodness and praise to an almighty God. In fact, in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, here's Joseph choosing to love life. Here is Joseph willing to love life. He said, you brothers of mine, you were mean to me. You hated me. You, you were on the verge of killing me. You thought it evil to me. But God took all of that and God thought it to be good to me. I'm going to go back to my original statement. You can enjoy your Christian life if you're a mind to. You can look at the dark side. You can look at the defeated side. Uh, you can look at all the hardships or you can look at the bright side, the answers to prayer, the needs that God has met. The pleasure of communing with His Holy Spirit. He that will love life. And the verb for love there, agapao. It is the verb form of the noun agape, agapao. Uh, we Christians ought to, in the deepest sense, in the, in the most meaningful sense, we ought to love life as God has given it to us. And the word for life is zoe comes from zoe, and it means this. I heard a Greek teacher say this. It means life on the highest plane. Not life biologically speaking. Not life just as blood pressure. Uh, not life just as muscles and tissue and sinews. Life on the highest plane. Life with significance. Life with meaning. Jesus would have said life more abundantly. He that would love life. In other words, if I want to love my life, if I'm going to enjoy my life, there's some things I must not do, and then there's some things I must do. Peter's going to describe it in some detail. I'm in verse 10 still. He that will love life, hey, hey class, somebody to whom I'm speaking is a natural born pessimist. Somebody I'm speaking to, it is your nature, it is your tendency. You, you're, you're rather melancholy in your view of life. Always to look at the dark side. This verse says that can be changed. This verse says through the power of the Word of God and the touch of the Holy Ghost, you can will to and with the help of God decide to, desire to love your life. To look at the bright beautiful side of the Christian life. He that will love life and see good days. And, and, and the verb see there, ido, it's spelled E-I-D-O and it can mean to see here and see good days. You want to have some good days, pleasant days, profitable days, helpful days. Ido also can mean to know 282 times in our King James New Testament, I know is translated to know. If you want to see good days, if you want to know good days, there are certain things that Peter will describe for us. You want to live a profitable life. If you want to live a life approved unto God, like Paul, if you want to live a life where you finish your course with joy, Peter's got the recipe for doing that, to see good days. Let me, let me give you that adjective, good. Agathos. Agathos. And what does it mean? It means good in this sense. Good that will help somebody. Good that will encourage somebody. Good that will pray with somebody. Good that will spread a little cheer uh, uh, spread a little encouragement where you go. That's the word for good. Not a dormant word for good, an active, a proactive word for good. You want to see good days. 
You want to be a real servant of the Lord? And, and get this, the word for days is Himera. It's a standard Greek noun for days, Himera. And the noun Himera that gives us days derives from the little noun Hora, H-O-R-A, and that gives us hours. Let me, let me discuss that a minute. If you're going to have good days, you're going to have to make up your mind to have some good hours. You're going you're gonna to have to make up your mind to make every minute. You're going to have to learn to redeem the time minute by minute, hour by hour, which will equal day by day. I'm on a little diet, a little, uh, 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 it, it's helping my blood pressure, it's reducing my weight. And, uh, and so after I get back to the motel room tonight, I will be hungry. I, I, physically, I was the type of person that would eat late at night after the sermon. Now, uh, the pressure's off. I could enjoy a sandwich. This diet, I have placed myself, I, it won't allow that. How am I going to get now from now till midnight when I go to bed? 1 a.m. when I go to bed. I got a little study project I want to complete back in the, How am I going to do that? The whole evening, you turn the day, Himera, into Ora hours. I'll go back and I'll not eat from 9 o'clock till 10 o'clock. Then I'll not eat from 10 o'clock till 11. I can do that. Then I'll not eat from 11 o'clock till midnight. If I take it an hour at a time, I can win the night. If, I, if I'm a victorious an hour at a time, I can win the day. If you want to see good days, you've got to make every hour a sweet hour. Communion, fellowship with your dear Lord. So verse 10 is pretty plain there. If you want to love life, I do. If you want to see good days, oh, how that's my desire. For Jesus' sake, for the honor and glory of God, uh, that they might see something I've done good and glorify my Father in heaven. Then what must I do? Uh, it's negative. What must I not do? Here it comes. Refrain your tongue from evil. Refrain your tongue from evil. You mean my tongue? has got something to do with my days that I have, my outlook on life. Yes, indeed, refrain. Uh, it is the Greek verb pao, P-A-U-O, pao. What does it mean, preacher? To pause, but it's got to be stronger than that. To cease, might ought to be stronger than that. To bring to a stop, I have to keep my tongue from evil. And the word tongue is glossa. It is spelled G-L-O-S-S-A. My lips are dry from preaching, I guess. Glossa. The 50 times it is used in the New Testament, every time, the tongue, the tongue. But it's not just that, that little piece of my body, the tongue. It means what my tongue does, the speech, the words, the sentences and paragraphs and thoughts expect, refrain your tongue from evil. Let me give you the word for evil. Kakos. K-A-K-O-S. Kakos. What does it mean? This will surprise you. It is not the worst word for evil. That would be poneros. Kakos is a word for evil. It's evil, but it's not as bad as poneros. Here it is. Evil in this sense. Good for nothing. That'll work. Good for nothing. Without profit. Without any redeeming value. He said you're going to have to learn to use your words and keep them from good for nothingness. Keep them from emptiness. Keep them from vanity that's the idea uh, that Peter is promoting let him keep his tongue from evil and uh, and uh, then keep his lips that they speak no guile the word uh, lips get this it's interesting the word lips comes from the root greek word uh, chasma c h a s m a chasma uh, this is important. I think it's extremely interesting. 
word for lips, chasma, and chasma gives to us the English word C-H-A-S-M, chasm. Now, I hope this is not uh, distasteful to anybody. Watch my lips. I open my lips. I open my mouth and there is a chasm. There is a gulf fixed, protruding into my mouth. Uh, in, in other words, the, 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 the parallels, they're synonyms here. Tongue and lips. Tongue and lips. Both stand for what I say. My vocabulary. My speech. If it, and that they speak no guile. And for speak, it's laleo, and it emphasizes everyday conversation. Pulpit speech, not always laleo. Uh, speech uh, that you're going to give in the uh, public speaking class, and you're going to give your testimony, that's not laleo. That's more logeo, laleo, everyday conversation. Don't let your lips, your tongue speak any. Guile, that's dolos, D-O-L-O-S. I'm spending too much time on vocabulary. Dolos, and dolos comes from the Greek verb delo, to decoy, deceit, misleading people. Peter just said, if I can control this mouth, if I can control this tongue, if I can curb it from speaking good for nothing things, from speaking evil things, if I can control it and not allow it to speak deceit, cheating, guile, and hypocrisy, that will contribute greatly to me as a Christian loving my life and seeing and enjoying good days. Preacher, loving life, seeing good days. Listen, for the Christian. Oh, my. I got to share this for, for the Christian. One of my favorite verses, Psalm 118, verse 24. Many of you know it by heart. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. That's loving life. That's determining. You're going to see good day. Uh, get this. It's Solomon. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 17. Solomon says, Solomon under the sun. Solomon not recognizing God, I hated life. Therefore, I hated life. A lot of people do hate life. A lot of people end their lives. They're miserable. For the saint of God, we can love our life. Here's a way you can look at your Christian life, and it'll make you love it. It'll make you beneficial. You can look at it as an adventure. You can look at your life as an adventure. Adventure. Listen to this. I copied it. Somebody said it. Another preacher. You can endure your life and it'll be a burden. You can escape your life like it's a battle. You're running from it. Endure it. It's a burden. Escape it. It's a battle. Or you can enjoy it. It's a blessing. You can enjoy your life. It is a blessing. Meaning God is in control. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. I want to please him. And I can do that by living a good life. Living a joyful life. That refraining your tongue. Oh my. Refraining your tongue. I want to give you a corollary verse here very quickly if I can. Refraining your tongue. The Bible is filled with information about the tongue. Absolutely. Solomon on the tongue. Go to the book of Proverbs. He talks about it dozens of times. Controlling the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's what Proverbs teaches me. My, my. In the multitude of words, there lacketh not sin. More I talk, the more I'll sin. That's Proverbs. New Testament. Go to the book of James chapter 3. He'll tell us more about the tongue in a paragraph that you can learn in a lifetime in a philosophy class somewhere. Jesus in the tongue. By your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. Matthew 12, Jesus taught that. Peter in the tongue, here and now. 
Oh, my goodness. Preacher, you said you had a verse that would help me uh, in refraining my tongue from evil and my lips. From, here it is. I hope you can see it. I'm going to hold it there a minute. Memorize this verse. Underline this verse in your Bible. Psalm 141, verse number 3. Psalm 141, verse 3. May I read it to you? Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. That word watch, Lord, put a guardian angel. Put a guardian angel before my mouth. And keep, and that's another guard, watch, help me to be mindful of every word. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. There we are again, mouth and lips. Synonyms, identical in their emphasis. Set a Lord, set a watch, Lord. Put a guardian angel at my mouth. Keep Guard the door of my lips, O oh Lord, and help me to speak wise things, encouraging things, good things for your honor and your glory. A preacher said this. I came across it as I was studying today. Every Christian ought to read James chapter 3 regularly. That's that paragraph about the tongue. Every Christian ought to read James 3 regularly and Psalm 141.3, our verse, daily. In fact, I'd read it, I'd memorize it, and I'd quote it daily. Mm -mm -mm. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips that they speak no God. In Philippians 4.8, one of my favorite verses where Paul tells us what to think about yeah, he tells us what to think about. That detail, how we ought to live for Jesus, of the many things to think about. Here it is. Whatsoever things are of good report. Of good report. You ever think about praying, Lord, help my lips, my tongue today to give a good report? That'd rule out most gossip. That'd rule out slander, wouldn't it? Of good report. And the word there for good report means that it would put good light upon everyone whom I discuss. Wow. Can I read verse 10 again? It is powerful. He who will, he chooses to, he decides to, he's determined to, and the Holy Ghost will help you. He that will love life and see good days, refrain, put it on pause. Stop it. Let him refrain his tongue from evil, even good for nothing speech, and his lips that they conversationally speak. No deceit, no guile, no hypocrisy, no misleading information. Wow. Verse number 11. We must save some time for verse number 11. More Godly information. Let him eschew evil. Let him eschew evil. Let's talk a minute about that word eschew. And uh, uh, when we get down to evil again, we're back at kakos, K A K, not poneros. We're not talking about septic tank, cesspool filth here. We're talking about idle gossip. We're talking about good-for-nothing conversation that does not edify and encourage and build up our believers, fellow believers in Christ. Let him eschew evil. What does eschew mean? Ek klino. The verb is ek, and then the root of the verb k-l-i-n-o, klino. And what does it mean? To avoid. To avoid. It means to deviate. To detour around, to deviate. Literally, it means, uh, how am I going to put it? Et clino. Clino is our word recline. Get it? Our word to recline. Don't recline. Don't have an inclination toward that which is evil in your spirit. Let him eschew 
evil. And I might add this. I came across it in, in some word study today. Eschew evil actually has a tinge of the verb to hate evil. Not only to recline, not, not only not to recline toward it, uh, not only uh, to deviate around it, detour it, but to hate. Let him hate evil speech. Let him eschew evil. And then one of Peter's favorite terms, let him do good. Let him do good. And do is poeo, P-O-I-E-O. -E this is an imperative mood verb. It's a command. God commands us to do good. Poeo, the word poet, the word poem. We've discussed it before. When I do something good for the glory of God, God said, you just wrote a poem. God says, you're a poet serving me. Let him do good. That's agathos again. Good that will help somebody. Good that leaves the house and goes down the street looking for someone uh, you can benefit. Let him do good. Still a command. Let him seek peace. Zeteo. Let him search for and not quit till he finds it. Let him seek peace. That reminds me of something the Lord Jesus said. Uh, Blessed are the peacemakers. Matthew 5, 9. They will be called the children of God. The peacemakers. That's poeo again. You bring peace. Build peace. Not peace at any price. Not peace where you have to compromise uh, the precious word of God. No, no, no. Not that kind of peace. That's a false peace. But you're a peacemaker where, where there's a little misunderstanding. You'll try to introduce common ground. You'll try to introduce the sweetness of the Spirit. Oh my. Romans 12, 8. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Romans 14, 9. Follow after the things that make for peace. Uh, it will require some effort, but be a peacemaker. A command from God. Let him seek peace and Ensue it. And the verb ensue it is dioko, D I O K O, dioko. And dioko means to chase after something, to run after it, to run after it energetically, vehemently till you catch it. Seek peace and pursue it. And to seek peace and pursue it, let me give you this. It, uh, peace. Irene, E-I-R-E-N-E. -E. We've had the noun before uh, and, and we'll have it again as we study the New Testament. What does Irene mean? It comes from the verb Iro, E-I-R-O, to join two things together that once were far apart. Two brethren, two sisters. Remember Philippians, Paul said, I beseech you, Odious and Sintica, two ladies in the church that were not getting along. I beseech them, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Paul was being a peacemaker. Seek peace and sue it as you are doing good. Let me talk about doing good. Poeo, agathos, doing good. Peter often uses a Greek word that blends. Poeo and agathos. And you get, listen to this. Peter talks about doing good. It's one of his favorite themes. 1 Peter 2.14, 1 Peter 3.11, our text tonight, 1 Peter uh, 3.11, and then again in 1 Peter 4.19, that's three times already. 1 Peter 2.15, it's the will of God that you do well. You'll put to silence wicked men. God's will that you do. 1 Peter 2.20, uh, they're buffeting you and you're taking it patiently, and you're not guilty, you're doing well. 1 Peter 3, 6, Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters are ye, as you do well, and you do well, you're, you're living right in your home. And then 1 Peter 3, 17, if you suffer for doing well, God will bless you, God will honor you. It's the idea all the way through Peter's writings, doing good. Doing well, living a lovely life to bring honor and glory to God. Do you want to love life? I do. Do you want to see good days? Amen. Then obey the injunctions, which begins 
with controlling our tongue. God